So this is it guys, uh, this is gonna be the start of this epic project, the gazelle, and I will just take you again through the box, uh, what's inside. <laughs> As you can see inside, we are, we'll we are dealing with this, um, like I said, sprue carnage, as I like to call it. It's some clear parts that I have to um, kind of buff out because the windows are kind of foggy. Um, yeah, okay, let's see. This is basically all that it is to it. So, um, the cockpit is here. This is probably not going to be used, and yeah, the rest is here. So yeah, it's it's really not going to be a, a big, a big sprue count or a big part count. But yeah, this is, these are the parts. So what I need to do now is first tackle the uh, cockpit area, which you will see on screen. <clears throat> it's really simple. It's very simplistic, but I've taken some photographs of the real thing. And I will show you guys how it is supposed to look and I'm going to try to replicate that in the build process So you can see the seats are, are, are wrong. This uh, seats are should, should, will be different this back the bench on the back Where is the cockpit? Where is the cockpit? Oh, yeah, this is the cockpit floor um, And the dashboard and some panels. I don't uh, Yeah, there's somewhere here anyway, but yeah this is going to be it for the first so the cockpit is going to be the first task then i'll take care of the body i see these holes here these holes here are not supposed to be on this original one that we have so i'll putty them up um, i also have to remove this for the anti-tank thing i have to send it out and what else do i have to do um i have the clean and tidy up a couple of things but on this particular one not, not a big deal uh, <clears throat> this is going to be the biggest problem for me just like on the first one the cockpit the cockpit is really um, annoying to put together because it's all clear parts and it doesn't align up so I have to figure out how to align it so that it won't look crooked like on my test build and also I have to uh, like I said um, buff these windows out because they're kind of mm, damaged from all the handling of the box and it's kind of scratched they're kind of scratched up so i have to take care of that <clears throat> but most importantly i have to make <clears throat> very precise uh, masking tape pieces for these windows so that's why i've already prepared a couple of things in advance and i'll show you this step by step as i go along how I tackled on to make this more precise in cutting them out because the first time that I did this I just cut out the template by by eye and I scratched the whole surface and it wasn't terrible so yeah this is gonna be the biggest project and the biggest problem and of course at the end when everything else is gonna be painted and completed and covered in um, all glossy lacquer or actually just lacquer I will put on homemade decals yay oh one more thing on this one, on the body itself, I have to cut these little box out and make a little indent. I'll show you on the picture again. Um, here's like a, a hook that kind of goes on a on a crane if you want to lift the helicopter up, I guess. So yeah. Anyway, enough of me talking. Let's do the building, shall we? Yay!
So, uh, it's been a couple of days since I've last started doing this. Um, but just to give you an update on what I've done so far. Okay, I've glued the two halves of the fuselage together, the back portion, and I have modified this thing where it's supposed to be like a hook for the um, hanging on the aircraft because in the original kit that's just covered. So basically what I did was I took some uh, styrene plastic, you know, this stuff, and I just cut out a little square and glued it on the back. And then I took some brass tubing. I think it was the smallest one. I have a 0 0.3 mil. And I inserted it inside as a rod for the hole. And I also put some brass tubing here, which again, I think it's a little bit um, big for the scale, but eh, it's okay. I just wanted to simulate this. Um, I think it's just a wire that goes all along the tail of the gazelle. And the, the, I've done the, the same on the back side. I've puttied this little huge gap that was here before. And I've also puttied and filled in the holes um, that are on the back. I've also puttied the holes that are in the sides because I had to kind of sand this thing down to be smooth. Because here in the, orig in the uh, original kit, you have the probability, the, the, huh, the probability the um, chance to put on the um, anti-tank rockets, right? So our gazelle doesn't. Um, then I had to do some work on the cockpit. Now the cockpit itself is pretty boring as you saw in the video before this. There's basically no features at all. So what I've done to modify this a little bit uh, and make it just like ours is I cut out the square in the front so that it has similar one and I simulated the guide wire for the foot pedals with plastic sprue. I have um, made this little center console which is not really present f in the original one. There's just like this hand lever which is boring and I've also modified these this hand lever to be much more like the original one although it's kind of crappy right now because there's some putty still stuck to it so I have to clean this up before I paint it and that's why the major uh, modification to the cockpit or I should say to the part of the cockpit was the seats now these are the seats that I came up with um, yeah I have to kind of smooth them out a little bit but you'll see the image on the screen right now of how the seats are supposed to look okay I know that this styrene rod is way too thick for the scale that is it I should have used like maybe this little thing the brass tubes and kind of all around but uh, it's an experiment I wanted to see how well I can do this and basically how I did this I took the original seat and I'll show I took the original seat and I cut it right right here where you see the difference of the color and then I took some styrene um, styrene this thing and I measured around a centimeter of length and I basically just um, glued it on where I cut the one off and I waited until it dried and then I shaped it I just took some uh, tweezers no not tweezers sorry not tweezers uh, pliers I think yeah and I uh, cut basic shape out and then I sanded it to be this ovalish shape that it is now it's not perfect I know um, but it will do and I had to cut out this little sprue here uh, this little um, styrene rod here because I couldn't fit it inside the cockpit so now it fits pretty much okay to a point where it falls over anyway you get the point I did this two times because of the um, there are two seats of course and uh, this is basically um, not putty but it's this thing okay it's milk putty yeah it's milk putt it's basically some sort of it's like a epoxy based resin thing that you mix together to halves and then you have like this gooey stuff that you can put and shape into the form and now I have, all I have to do is to case sand this down to be a little more smoother more like you know leathery like it is on the real thing and then it will be time for me to glue everything in place and set and then paint it of course the paint job on the interior is basically very simple I think it, I'm just gonna leave it like um, 
uh, gray, like primer gray, because it's basically gray. Maybe I'll put some darker gray on side, but I'll, I'll think about that. I have to see the photographs and see how uh, gray it actually is inside. I'll put some detail on here as well, because there's like a, a ra not a radio box, but uh, I think in here, there, there you, can, you can't see it on the camera, but there's like a, an, uh, a piece of plastic that is a little bit different with some bolts on top. I think this is where the battery is because on the front it says, you know, take care of the battery before you disconnect and whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, that's that's basic, that basically it for the cockpit. Oh, and the one thing that I have to do is, because this goes like here, like inside, on the back on the gazelle in the museum, there is this pattern. There's like this um, diamond pattern on the back and I will simulate this with, again, with this putty thing. So I will put some putty here, flatten it, and then I'll do some diamond pattern either with you know um, a toothpick or some other a very small but sharp object to make a diamond pattern. So it's like this. I've also done this little antenna as you can see here. Um, this is not the original thing. I've basically took uh, three thinnest styrene pieces as I have. These things, these are really awesome. They're very thin. I laminated three of them together and then I just sanded it down, um, then I cut it to shape and then I sanded it down to a little point that it simulates the antenna and then I just took a little piece of styrene, uh, this little tube, and I cut out a very narrow portion and I just glued it to the base. So this is this antenna is basically here. So it goes on like this, right? And this little um, thing is just a sprue that I've extended. You know, I cut, I um, put a lighter on the sprue and then I stretched it out and I made this little wire thingy. So yeah, this is the antenna that will go on the back like so and is not included in the kit in the original. So this is the modification that I've done. I've also tinkered with uh, the cockpit. Now this cockpit is appalling. Um, as you can see, I've masked off the windows, right? And this took me, oh my God, a long, long time. Now, on the original Gazelle, which I have here, I just kind of eyeball it and I quickly cut it out. And if you look at it from afar, it's, it's okay. But if you look at it close, it's really not. It's really bad. So, yeah. I had to be more precise this time around. And um, that's why I first started to draw, like I took a picture of this, like I took a top-down picture and I went on my uh, computer and I traced the outlines, right, uh, in a vector program. So that I could kind of, the idea was that I would trace this and then I would print it on this, you know, masking tape. This actually worked, but I did not get the right results. The windows that I printed were either too big or too small, and I ended up cutting them by hand, just by looking, looking like by eye. So yeah, in the end, I was just very. It was just a very painstaking process to mask everything out. The the outside portion I had to be much more careful because you, you have the dividers in the windows that you can't see right. Maybe not not can see, but there are like dividers. On the back, I just you know slammed, slapped the whole piece on because it's just gonna be gray. Um, so yeah, that, that took me quite a long time. But the biggest, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest thing that I've had to do was the decals, and these are the decals. Well, some of them. Um, the black decals, homemade decals, were pretty are pretty good. I mean, they're very decent. Uh, they came out pretty well. The colored ones, such as these, and the white ones, in, white ones in particular, did not. And the reason is that making your decal paper is pr making your decals is pretty complicated stuff. Because okay, I I did the logos, I made everything happen. It was I, I had fun designing this and you know, designing, but I just copied it from the originals, found some symbols, and then like replicated it, right? That took me quite a long time to make it as good as it can be. 
because there are kind of there are kind of a lot of the, the markings here on the gazelle which you know I had to replicate but anyway the problem is when you have to print out white decals now you cannot print white of course um, so what I had to do I had to buy white decal paper and print it on there so that the white would be white and then you know everything else will be as it's supposed to be but the problem is once you actually start cutting it out, you see that I was kind of doing it by, you know, eye and yeah, this is the result. You know, the edges, the white edges and there's like crimpled and it's blech. It just looks like a very poor job and especially the letters. Each individual letter has to be cut out and then positioned on the... Uh, tail which is a long process that's why I didn't cut this zero out completely because it was like ugh. I started out with this O here and I just cut the up, top O out, out and the bottom kind of tore it tore itself so yeah I'm gonna have to rethink this um, I'll pro I have found some markings online for this particular model but they're in one seventy second scale so the letters are probably gonna be too small but I'll see once I get them. I have to think of a way of making these decals work. The, like I said, the black ones look work, look and work perfectly, but the colored ones, not so much. So this is basically what I've done so far, and this is where I, let, I leave you, and I, you will see the progress from this point on. Enjoy.
but still they're so brittle. And this is just a normal decal solution. This is like Revell, the the not the very mo not the most powerful one. I can imagine how devastating it would be if you would probably use like Mark Fit Strong or something. So definitely not use those kind of things. Maybe that's just the decal paper that's been used for this application, but this is really brittle. So yeah, I've done two sides. So let me see, let me show you. So the emblem and the gazelle, so the emblem and the gazelle on top, on both sides. Uh, you can't barely see the gazelle sign on top. Um, but one thing that I've noticed is that when they were printing this, uh, because uh, it's like a layered printing job, they've put white as the base color and because the letters are so thin the white shows through so it's not the perfect most perfect thing but again this kit is not really perfect so it's okay so let's just uh, move on and uh, put all the other decals as they are on the kit Ta -da! It is done guys and I'm pretty proud of it. It turned out pretty good um, Better than I hoped for uh, it's not perfect by any standards, but it's pretty nice Let me just turn this baby around So the last time you saw this model was me just trying to put on decals and I did as you can see They're all it's all decaled up um, All of them are here See, and the little spotlight is on the bottom. That was, that was a good thing, better than that. So, um, yeah, you, you can't see the, the black decals because they're so, you know, they, they just kind of go, we have to be really close to see them, but you know, you can see them. See, that's, what I'm that, that's what I was talking about, you know, that the white lining, that white, those white spots are basically, um, that the decal. The bottom layer, the bottom white layer, but it, it's all right. It's all right. I'm satisfied. Um, so what did I do afterwards? So I attached the rotors, of course, a bit basic. Um, um, then I did the, the uh, antenna. I attached that. I painted the lights on either side. So this is a red, and then there's a green. And I've also painted the lights on top of the tail and on the back. Um. Oh, and I've painted the steps, the, the skids, right? So on the original hours, we have this sort of um, protective anti-slip mats on the skids. So, you know, you don't slip when you step on the plane, uh, on the helicopter, sorry. And yeah, that's pretty much what I did. Oh, I just, you know, sprayed, sprayed with one coat of uh, lacquer, matte, and then removed all the masking tape from the windows. The masking tape was pretty good, however, I did do some boo-boos as you can see here. Yes, it's not very good. So, I'm hoping some other manufacturer is gonna make this gazelle um, in the future, because I really wanna tackle this one again. I don't really wanna do the Heller one again, to be honest, because it, it, look at this, see? That's what I'm talking about. Look at how the tail is like on one side. It's like, oh my god. Um, yeah. Oh, and I've also painted the this clamps in the metallic color on top. But yeah, it's it, it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with it. Even the exhaust turned out pretty good. Um, you know, you see those things that I've done, the cutouts. I cut out, cut out the the square and then or the rectangle, and then I placed a piece of styrene on the back and then put a little brass tube in there so they could simulate that little 
handle, I guess. Yeah, it was. It's. It did turn out pretty well. Especially, I like the effect that the um, rotors are kind of, you know, slumming down from their weight because this is a stationary model. It's not supposed to be simulating like fl in flight because there's no pilot. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the inside cockpit was a little bit an overkill because um, you know you can't really see a lot of details inside. Um, even if I go very close, you can see, but you can't see, you know, it's one of those things. Um, but I'm really glad that I tackled the project and I'm really looking forward to doing another one. Um, this time I will be doing a smaller, again a helicopter, but a different one. And yeah, that will be my project for the next couple of weeks. Um, but during that week I will be also building something else which you will see in a future video um, Yeah That's that's I really like this. I really do. Well guys. I hope you enjoyed this video um, I really enjoyed building it um, If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up uh, subscribe if you're new if you like the contents of the channel uh, click that little bell icon down there in the corner so you get notified every time I upload. I upload every Saturday or Sunday depending on how much time I have but I try to make my um, best to upload at least once a week. Usually I do reviews of um, products from various manufacturers of kit models and you can watch the videos uh, in the you know others that I have on the channel. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.